we're talking about the orbitals about a hydrogen atom, and we're using the three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, to describe wave functions. Each wave function describes an orbital. We're going to use those terms interchangeably. Wave function, orbital. So we're up to n equal 2, and one possible value for n equal 2 is l equal 1. Remember, values of n determine the values of the other quantum numbers. For n equal 2, you can have l equals 0 or 1. l goes from 0 to n minus 1 in integer steps. So the value of l equal 1, we give the letter designation p. So these are going to be p orbitals. How about the values of m sub l? The values of m sub l for l equal 1, remember, m sub l goes from minus l to l in integer steps. So from minus 1, 0, 1, three values of m sub l for the value l equal 1. So we're going to have three different p orbitals. m sub l equal minus 1, m sub l equal plus 1, and the m sub l equals 0 option. Plus and minus 1 will give us values of the p orbitals that look like this. We'll have an angular node. Now this is different from the radial node we saw earlier. An angular node is a node that has a planar shape rather than a spherical shape for the radial nodes. And we'll have three possible values of m sub l, so three possible values of the uh, p orbitals. Here I've drawn px and py, where the, the square of the wave function is large around the y-axis for the py. The square of the wave function is large around the x-axis for the x. The wave function changes sign from plus to minus, which I've also noted by the color here, green to red, red for the positive sign and green for the negative sign. That helps you find the angular node. Now, there's one other value of m sub l equals 0, and that will give you the pz orbital, where the square of the wave function has its maximum along the z axis. So the reason I've separated them like this, m sub l plus 1 minus 1 and m sub l equals 0, is we can choose various ways to describe the wave functions. And the way we choose for p is rather than use m sub l plus and minus and 0, we use a combination of the plus and minus ones to give us orbitals that neatly lie along the x and the y axis. And the m sub l equals 0 already neatly lies along the z axis. So this gives us a nice three-dimensional orientation in space. One p orbital along the z axis, one p orbital along the x axis, and one p orbital along the y-axis. So three p orbitals for three values of m sub l, and we combine them so that they exist in space in kind of a pleasing way. x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And we'll call them the 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals. We're kind of giving three designations, an n, an l, and an m sub l, to define a wave function, and that defines the orbital that we're talking about. These are the p orbitals. Now, we can continue. If we go to n equal 3, we're allowed to have l values 0, 1, and 2. So we'll have a 3s that'll be spherically shaped. It'll have two nodes now, two radial nodes, because the total number of nodes is n minus 1. We'll have some 3p orbitals, that is n equal 3, l equals 1. And those will be shaped like the 2p orbitals, except n is 3, so they'll be further from the nucleus, larger distribution, and they'll have an extra node, an extra radial node, because of the higher quantum number. When you get to l equal 2, now we can have five possible values of m sub l. Remember, l equal 2 means m sub l goes minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Five values of m sub l. So there's five orbitals in the d value. l equal 2 is, we give the designation d, five energy equivalent 
d orbitals that have different orientations in space. And the d orbitals, we're not so concerned that you know the exact spatial representation, but we've got them here, and they have more complicated designations. This, for instance, is a d orbital that lies along the z axis, the dz squared orbital. And there's four other d orbitals that make up the set of five from m sub l minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. And of course, we do the same thing we do with the p's. The actual m sub m l value is a combination that gives you these various five orbitals. But five values of m sub l have to give you five energy equivalent orbitals. That makes up the 3d orbitals. So now we understand s, p, and d orbitals. And we understand everything we need to know to have quite a good understanding of atomic orbitals in the hydrogen atom.